Hi, I'm Lewis and welcome back to my YouTube channel. In today's video, we're we going to go through the four pillars of stock investing, four main key concepts everyone needs to understand when looking into companies and investing in individual stocks. Um, a lot of the time people get caught up in the stock price and they don't actually understand the underlying business. These four, these four methods will go a long way in helping you when looking into stock investing. The first pillar of stock investing is a company needs to be profitable have high return on capital and it needs to use low leverage to do this. A pretty simple concept to understand, if you're going to invest in a company, you need to make sure that it's making money already. Um, for me, um, if a company hasn't made a profit, I rarely look into them um, because for me, if I'm going to put my money into a stock, I need to know that that company is making money and not losing money. Simple as that, no questions. Um, Companies can have blips and have bad years, we all have bad years. Um, some, some businesses, for example, in coronavirus, um, say Disney, for example, uh, they've made a loss uh, this year and they probably will do next year. Uh, just due to the coronavirus, doesn't mean they're a bad business, it just means certain crises can, you know, hamper certain businesses, businesses in some ways. Some could say that the best businesses don't have a lapse at all and they will consistently stay profitable, but that would be very rare, I'd say. All companies can have a bit of a crisis and if that happens the share price can drop and it can be a buying opportunity. Um, but anyway, blabbing on a bit, but yeah, companies to be profitable, needs to have a high return on capital, so it's making a good amount of profit based on the amount the owners have invested in the business, so the equity. Um, the higher this number, the better, um, simple as that. Uh, and then the low leverage part, um, we all know leverage, um, debt basically. Um, debt is a sliding scale of fragility. So the more debt you have, or a company has, the more risky um, the company is. Um, so if a company is using a lot of debt to you know, create profits, not necessarily a bad thing in some circumstances, but the majority of the time, you want to be looking at businesses with low debt because it means they are profitable using their own cash to finance their operations. Um, so that is pillar number one. Pillar number two, so pillar number two is all about the management of the company. So what you want to be looking for is you want the company, the company management, the, the, the board of directors, the chief executive, you want all of them to um, have equal measures of talent and integrity. Um, so basically you want them, the people running the business to be very smart and talented people in their industry. Um, but what you also want is you want people to be you know, honest, open, clear, straight to the point, no funny business. Um, if the chief executive is a bit dodgy, for example, or he's done, he's got some questionable things in the past, you need to question that. If someone is running the, running the company that you're investing in, you need to make sure they are honest and good people. Um, it's quite a hard thing to measure because it's not a financial thing, but you can. The best way I find to do this is by reading the annual report and get a gist of what the management is trying to do. Um, you know, they will quite often put a positive spin on things, but you can work out if the management has been truthful and honest by looking by at some of the figures. So compare some of the figures to what they're actually saying. So if they're saying they're having a good year but the numbers show otherwise, you need to question, well, what's what's going on here? So like I say, integrity and talent, talented management, uh, they are um, the second pillar. Pillar number three. So pillar number three is all about reinvestment opportunities. So if you've got a profitable business, which is making a lot of money, what are they doing with the cash? Um, there's three main things you can do. So number one would be acquisitions. So if a company has got lots of excess cash and there's another competitor or there's, some, there's another business where they could merge or um, you could use the cash to buy the business and that in, in turn grows the business. Uh, this can be a good way of using excess cash to um, grow the business in the right circumstances. I'm not a big fan of acquisitions using debt. Um, it can happen sometimes. Um, quite a few companies do do this. Um, but the best acquisitions is where you're just paying straight up cash for the business um, to grow. Number two will be dividends. So dividends, um, dividends are fantastic for shareholders. So um, you know, excess cash in the business. Um, you know, companies paying the shareholders, you know, a certain dividend every year. Um, so yeah, dividend is one of the most popular ones. Um, and then in the past 10, 15 years or so. Number three would be uh, share repurchases. So, a very tax efficient way of returning to shareholders is by repurchasing shares. Uh, so, if a company will repurchase shares from the stock market, 
reducing the share capital, which means all the, all of the shareholders you'd think would get boosted because there's less shares in circulation. So in turn, you'd think the stock price would go up. Um, so compared to like dividend tax, for example, um, it's a lot more tax efficient. Um, share repurchases, again, in the right situation are good. Um, all of these three have the pros and cons, but at the end of the day, they are providing shareholder value. So this is what you want to be looking for in a business. Are they paying dividends consistently for decades? Are they doing consistent share repurchase programs for you know a good few years? Then acquisitions, are they making good, positive acquisitions with little debt? So number four, number four, the fourth pillar and probably the most important is when you're buying a stock, you need to be buying it at a fair price based on your valuation method. Um, the, the saying goes, you lock in your return when you buy um, an asset. So you don't make your money when you sell it, you make it when you buy it. So the lower you, you are buying the asset slash stock in this instance for, the more money you're going to make. Um, so based on your calculations, your valuation metrics, whether it's you're doing a discounted, discounted free cash flow, um, an asset, um, a sum of assets model, or net assets and uh, net assets of tangible book value, any of those models. If you if you are buying below what you think the company is worth, you're gonna you know you're gonna you're probably gonna do well in the long run. It's gonna stead you in, um, put you in good stead. Um, but when I say fair price, I mean if a company is a the company doesn't have to be cheap for you to buy it. It just has to be fair. Um, it has to be a reasonable price, like for a reasonable return. Um, so that's I'm not very I'm a value investor at heart, but I am more of a the Warren Buffett, um, Philip Fisher style investor, where I prefer to invest at a, in excellent businesses at a fair price, not just looking at cigar butts like Ben Graham did. Um, I love Ben Graham and it, it, the value is his books, uh, fantastic security analysis and the intelligent investor. But cigar butt investing is not a long-term thing in my view. You can pick up a lot of value traps. Um, a lot of businesses may look cheap, but there's a reason why, because they're not very good. I prefer to buy excellent, analyze excellent businesses and then buy them at a fair price. And I think in the long run, that is the most successful strategy and Warren Buffett, for example, has shown that. So there we go. They are the four pillars of stock investing. I know this video has been a bit shorter than the past few, but straight to the point, four pillars of investing. If you have any questions at all, just leave a comment. Um, and if you enjoyed the video, please like, subscribe, uh, and share this video with anyone who may like it. Um, any questions about the four pillars of investing, send me a DM on Instagram. Um, I'll put my handle up here now. Um, and yeah, before, before I go, if you would like a free share with free trade, um, the link in the video in the description below will um, give you a free share worth three pounds to two hundred pounds. Uh, and then, if you would like um, free free Bitcoin from BlockFi, um, if you deposit a hundred pounds worth, hundred dollars worth of Bit Bitcoin to BlockFi, you will get ten dollars using my referral link. Um, and as well as that, you get six percent interest on your Bitcoin, so not too bad. Not a, not a bad place at all to hold your Bitcoin. So anyway, now now that's all done. Thank you very much for watching, um, and I'll see you in the next video.